shares of Alaska Air fighting back to positive territory despite a wider than expected loss, with higher labor and fuel costs taking a bite out of profit margins. For more on the quarter, let's bring in CEO Ben Minicucci along with our very own Phil LeBeau. Welcome to both of you. Phil, kick things off. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, ben, let's start with the question I think a lot of people have, which is for the airline industry, and particularly for Alaska right now, uh, are you seeing any softening in demand at all? Or are you still expecting this to be a strong spring and a very strong summer? Well, good morning, Phil and Kelly from Seattle. Uh, you know, Phil, the momentum is continuing. We're seeing strong demand going into Q2. We saw it like from March and beyond. We were profitable in March. That momentum is continuing, and uh, we're reiterating our guide for full year, uh, you know, pre-tax margins from 9 to 12 percent in Q2 with strong double-digit pre-tax margins. Ben, given your exposure to the West Coast, particularly California, and the tech industry, what kind of an impact have you noticed as the tech, in, uh, especially the larger companies, have announced layoffs and pullbacks in terms of their spending? How much has that hit your sales to them in terms of corporate travel? You know, uh, Phil, it's a great question. At a macro level, we're recovered to about 75% on the business side, but on the corporate travel side, particularly with the tech sector and our major hubs, we're probably only recovered to 50 to 60%. And that is, as you said, a direct result of, you know, the tech layoffs and the uh, budget, uh, the travel budgets coming down. I, I, I would think the good news for us, I think they've reached their trough uh, in terms of spending on, on travel. Uh, the good news for us, I think there's probably upside going into the future. We haven't baked it into our forecast at all, but I think there's there's upside going forward into the back half of the year and, and into next year. Are the smaller businesses, the startups, the ones that are still out there truly starting up, are they traveling as much or are they reined in their spending as well? Oh, uh, Phil, we're seeing the small, medium-sized businesses, they're, they're traveling and, and they're spending. So uh, that's what's kept our our macro level at 75 percent. So we're, we're looking good from that perspective. It's really the corporate travel that's more depressed than any other part of the, our of our business. Uh, ben, it's Kelly here. If I uh, can Kelly, just jump go ahead. in. Phil, thank you so much. You know, we were just talking again uh, earlier this week about Southwest having this issue with its SWIFT system grounding flights. And we spoke to the head of the pilots union there, I think, and he said, you know, every night he's kind of holding his breath when they have to do their, their kind of daily uh, upgrade to make sure that it actually functions. What I didn't ask him, and I don't know if you can speak to this, is why don't other airlines have the same issue as we understand SWIFT as a system that everybody uses? You know, Kelly, it's a great question. What I will say is uh, airlines today are so heavily dependent on technology, uh, you know, both back end, but all our operational systems, as well as front end for customers. So I know at Alaska, we've undertaken uh, a huge internal study to look at every operational system and to make sure it's hardened, it's resilient, it's robust, so that we don't have these issues. Uh, and on the customer side, you know, it's the same type of same, same type of thing. We're investing a lot in innovation. We just unveiled our lobby of the future, where we can get a customer from check-in to TSA in under five minutes. We're introducing electronic bag tags hmm. and self bag drops. But all these systems, you know, are all technology dependent. So we, on our, the, what we need to do is really make sure that these systems are robust. And it right. just takes a lot of work. And we got a great IT team, but. You know, it, it, they are vulnerable sometimes if you don't put the uh, time into them. Right. And, and I guess and that's what I'm, I'm trying to get at is not so much kind of, you know, just jumping all over them. But to understand, did you guys make a strategic and investment choice in terms of technology that's paid off without you having to deal with these issues? Um, or is this just randomly happening to just one of the airlines? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, you know, and I'm, I didn't follow the exact situation that happened, but I know there's always upgrades that happen to your systems and, and you've got a lot of relationships with vendors. So those are the things you have to be careful about when upgrades come in and, um, uh, and, and you're working on these systems, Kelly. So uh, I know for us, we have a heightened uh, sensitivity to this based on what's gone on in the last few months. And I know our IT teams are on it every day to make sure that every time there's an upgrade or we're changing something that we test it to the full extent possible so that when we start up the next day that everything works. Hey, Ben, uh, you're in the midst of converting to an all Boeing fleet. Uh, that means adding a lot of 737 maxes. You know what's going on with Boeing in terms of they may have to slow down some of their deliveries uh, as they work through this issue uh, with their supplier spirit aero systems. Uh, do you sense at this time that you're going to get all of the maxes that you expect to get and to put into service uh, through the rest of this year? 
Uh, yeah, Phil, I think we're in a good spot there. So just to remind everyone, we had 72 Airbus air, airplanes. We're down to 10, which are going to phase out in the next six months. 45 maxes on property, 30 or 30 more coming this year. And most of our deliveries are nine maxes. So the quality issues that you mentioned with Spirit were primarily on the seven max and the eight max. So we see all our deliveries coming in. We do have three eight maxes coming towards the back half of the fourth quarter, but we don't see that impacting our delivery stream or any of our capacity guys. So we're really in a good spot. And just to be honest, Boeing has done just a great job delivering for us over the last uh, over the last year.